Good morning YouTube. It is really early and I'm trying to do this video before I go to work. So this is going to be the second part to our mental models. The Trivium and the Quadrivium. These are two books that I recommend. Even though this says Sister Miriam Joseph, there's absolutely no religious quackery in here at all. It's all straight grammar, logic, and rhetoric. I'm surprised that this Catholic nun was this logical. But nonetheless, it's definitely a great book to learn about logic, grammar, and rhetoric. And the Quadrivium, the four classical liberal arts of number, geometry, music, and cosmology. Now, how do these two books fit in with the other books that we talked about the other week? The other day, I mean, Seeking Wisdom, From Darwin to Munger. We also talked about the personal MBA, Master the, the Business of, uh, Master the Art of Business. And we had another book that talked about investing, The Last Liberal Art. So here we are. And once again, this is the one we talked about last time. Investing, the last liberal art. So, now we're kind of putting the pieces together here. Liberal art and investing. Hmm, okay. So, what's the deal with the trivium? Let's start with the trivium, okay? The reason I have this, first of all, is that these things, if you look at this, this is not the grammar that you've probably been taught in school. Unless you've gone to a liberal arts college or university, you probably have not been taught grammar in this way. So there's that. This is not the grammar that you've probably taught, been taught. This is something else here. So why are we looking at this? Why are we taking a look at these books? Here we go. Today, as in centuries past, a mastery of the liberal arts is widely recognized as the best preparation for work in professional schools such as those of medicine, law, engineering, or theology. Those who first perfect their own faculties through liberal education are thereby better prepared to serve others in a professional or other capacity. The seven liberal arts differ essentially from the many utilitarian arts, such as carpentry, masonry, plumbing, salesmanship, printing, editing, banking, law, medicine, or the care of souls. I guess that means doctor or nurse. And from the seven fine arts, which is architecture, architecture, instrumental music, sculpture, painting, literature, the drama, and the dance. Don't forget to boogie. So, for both the utilitarian arts and the fine arts are transitive activities, whereas the essential characteristic of the liberal arts is that they are imminent and intransitive activities. So, what does that mean? The utilitarian artist produces utilities that serve the wants of humanity. The fine artist, if he is of the highest order, produces a work that is a thing of beauty and joy forever, and that has the power to elevate the human spirit. So that's my endeavor here with you, is to elevate the human spirit, to give you some, some kind of information that you can use to increase the quality of your own life and maybe even of those around you and increase the quality of their life in some kind of way. So, the Trivium boils down to three arts of language. It deals with the mind. The Quadrivium deals with the art of quantity pertaining to physical matter. So this is non-physical, this deals with the mind, this deals with the physical world. Non-physical, physical. Easy enough to understand. Okay, so we can make the connection here with these, right? 
Now, remember, there is a monetary cash value to learning and studying and absorbing and in implementing and integrating these things. I want you to keep that in mind, you see? You see that? Investing the last liberal art. So liberal art is connected to cash value. All right, so let's take a look. Logic is the art of thinking. Okay, easy enough to understand. Grammar is the art of inventing and combining symbols. Words and letters, they're symbols. Rhetoric is the art of communicating those words and symbols. So logic is the art of thinking. First you have to think. Then you have to either speak it or write it or draw it. But you have to invent some kind of system or combine some kind of symbols. Symbols include words or drawings. And then rhetoric is an art of communication. The way that you communicate that. The word choice. The presentation, the delivery. All of that is included with rhetoric. Okay. Now the quadrivium, the four arts of quantity pertaining to matter. All right. You have discrete quantity or number. Number. Arithmetic is a theory of number. This basic math. And then applying that theory of number is what we call music. Music has a lot of math in it. Time signatures, the amount of beats per measure. It's very, very mathematical. Then you have continuous quantity, which is the theory of space or geometry. And then applying that geometry, we have astronomy. So, The trivium pertains to the mind. The quadrivium pertains to, to the matter, to physical matter. All right. Easy enough, simple enough. Now, let's move on here. The utilitarian or servile arts enable one to be a servant of another person, of the state, of a corporation, or of a business, and to earn a living. So, yes. I think that's most people, right? We, we go to school, we learn a, a skill, we get a degree so we can get a job or maybe open our own business. The liberal arts, in contrast, teach one how to live. They train the faculties and bring them to perfection. They enable a person to rise above his material environment to live an intellectual a rational and therefore a free life in gaining truth. Now, I'm not into the Bible stuff here, so you can scratch this out when she starts quoting a Bible scripture. Um, I'm not really too, you know, thrilled about that, but I am willing to skip that and go on to, you know, she's a Catholic nun. What do you expect? She's going to have to, you know, fit it in with her own background, but. I promise you there is no preachery in this book, okay? So, uh, and, you know, it's nothing negative here. It's basically a scripture that we all know. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So, so yeah, that's the, that's the gist of this one here. Let's see. Another one I like to highlight. As you can tell, I'm a highlighter, and I use more than one color because this book is important, okay? This book is very important. That's why I've got pink. Yes, I've got pink. Pink is the color of healing. And then I've got yellow. And I've got green. <laughs> so, um, let's see. The trivium is the oregano. No, just kidding. Organon, or instrument, of all education at all levels because the arts of logic, grammar, and rhetoric are the arts of communication itself. 
and that they govern the means of communication. So um, this was the training that formed the intellectual habits of Shakespeare and other Renaissance writers. Once again, what can I say? Um, there's a lot of good stuff here. I could just read on and on and on, but basically this will enable you to be to live an intellectual a rational and therefore a free life in gaining truth and I think that's what we all want isn't it so take a look at this book check it out of your library um, or you could purchase your own copy Amazon has a has some good rates there if you're if you don't mind used books I actually love used books I love it when they're already highlighted because I like to highlight my stuff I like to write notes and I love books I love used books that already had someone writing notes and highlighting because then that gives me more things to hook on to and more information the quadrivium is the physical part the matter part and this book here it is divided into various sections so it starts off with the archetype of number and what the symbolic meaning of numbers are the sacred meanings of numbers the way we're taught about numbers is just secular I think in school you know we're taught how to count we're taught well some of us don't even really know how to count if you know I mean I'm just gonna be honest with everyone here I think a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses don't know how to do math properly it's that Jehovah Witness math that Armageddon's right around the corner kind of math you know what I mean you know what I'm talking about hopefully you don't hopefully you've you know really been uh, someone who has all of their finances straight and you've never had to do that Jehovah's Witness math but anyway let's just move on <laughs> a lot of ex Jehovah's Witnesses are watching this video that's why I'm talking about Jehovah's Witnesses anyway sacred number it talks about the sacredness of different numbers the, um, the spiritual meaning of numbers and that's important because it takes you back very briefly you know it's very brief superficial information but it's something to get you started and it starts from the number one the great spirit and it goes all the way to ten and with these numbers there are these beautiful illustrations this is four and this is the symbolic meaning of four matrix or mother substance or foundation so after you get through with that then you move on to understand number and space geometry and sacred geometry and what these shapes actually meant and you're taken through a visual journey of these shapes that are not just in our geometry books but that are also found all around us in nature and even in our architecture even in the sky the movements of the planets and celestial objects so after you got that then you're going to go to platonic and archimedean solids and so you're going from a 2d dimensional geometry into three-dimensional solids and shapes that are found in our physical world next the harmonograph and this is really interesting because vibrations create when they put sand on um, a surface and then send various vibrations through that surface various shapes beautiful geometric shapes form and these shapes correspond to shapes found in nature 
So there is a component to sound forming physical matter. And in the ancient times, people have written that sound formed the world. I think in the Christian Bible, there is a statement that the in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And perhaps it could be talking about these shapes that we're seeing in the harmonograph. It's very interesting, these shapes. And it is clear that there are very, very symmetrical patterns forming with various sound vibrations. Look at that. It's very interesting. So sound is related to physical shapes. And there are individuals that believe that our physical world comes from the ohm sound, the eternal ohm, and that is the sound that creates the entire universe. So here, after we go from the harm harmonograph, we go to the elements of music, or, you know, our sound that we make in mathematical order, <laughs> sometimes. But here we have uh, the the piano keyboard and we have all of the uh, notes and the various here can you see that the various frequencies even the MIDI number isn't that great and once again a correspondence is tied into these physical shapes that we see various chord structures corresponding to various shapes. Now remember these shapes have sacred symbolism that you can anchor on or connect with that idea. So then, here we go, look at that. This is a comparison with, let's see what this says. I want to say this is a, an electron and a, an atom, or it might even be our solar system. Look at that. Does that not look like our solar system? Yeah, that's pretty interesting, right? How does music and the solar system fit together? Hmm. So there's that. Yeah. So after we go on to the music part, we have a little book of coincidence. I like this little book of coincidence. It's really, it's a cute little book. And basically, it takes you to the movements of the planet. Now look at that. This is similar. You see this picture in comparison to, where was that other picture we just had? There was a picture here. Oh. Here we are. This looks a lot like this, except this is from a different angle. Yeah. Hmm. So maybe there's a big, big, huge cosmic symphony going on here. Look at this. These are movements of the planets and different celestial objects. Doesn't that look like those images from the harmonograph? Yeah, so there's an order here. There's a very, very precise order, while at the same time, there's lots of room for creativity and spontaneity and just random, you know, mutations. Great stuff. So, um, putting it all together, we've got the trivium. The liberal arts of logic, grammar, and rhetoric, the stuff that can free your mind, and the quadrivium that helps you to put it together, to helps you to see it in your physical world. All right, so check out these two books. Once again, this, ad, this has a real cash value of learning, of studying.
And if you um, if you're interested in this one here, this is by Robert Hagstrom. Trivium is by Sister Miriam Joseph. This one here is Wooden Books. I don't think they have. Oh yeah, they do have. Well, they have. It's a compilation, but it's uh, by Wooden Books. You can get it off of Amazon, and it's probably even in your library. Um, one last thing. I want you to take a look at this, Mortimer Adler, a lexicon of Western thought. This is over 100 major great ideas. These are the big ideas of humanity. And these are like having a conversation with the greatest minds of the past 2,500 years. You're going to be talking to all kinds of people. Homer, Freud, Marcus Aurelius, Virginia Woolf. These are really, really great things, really, really great ideas. And you're going to have a different view if you're coming from a background of the Jehovah's Witnesses or, you know, Seventh-day Adventists or whatever. You're going to have a different view of these ideas, not necessarily a changed view, but you're going to understand a broader perspective. Just this idea here, angel. You think you know what an angel is? Then read this section. Animal. You think you know art, astronomy? These ideas are just so huge. When you start reading into this, it is just crazy. Once again, we're talking about mental models still. And why is this book important? Because inadequate schooling, indoctrinations, and mistakenly believe in the superiority of the 20th century in all fields of intellectual endeavor. Wait a minute. I'm starting in the middle of somewhere, and I don't even know what I'm reading. But anyway, I know it's highlighted, so it's important, right? <laughs> okay. Let me see where I can give you the uh, gist. Um, let's see. Such wisdom as has been achieved is in no way affected or conditioned by time and place. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Anyway, get the book. It's important, okay? I'm serious. 102 essays. Uh, succeed remarkably in presenting the major points of view on almost 3,000 questions without endorsing, applauding, or favoring any of the views presented. That's why I love this book. Because you can look at different viewpoints. You can look at opposing viewpoints. You can get it all here without any endorsement, without any applauding, and without any favoritism of anything. Now, I like that. I like that. I don't know about you, but I really like that. So, you've got 434 works by 73 authors from Homer to the 20th century. How about that? Karl Marx, Melville, Melville, William James, Sigmund Freud, Heisenberg, Max Weber, Whitehead. You see that? Herodotus. Plato, Aristotle, yes, we've got Aristotle, Augustine, Plutarch, Dante, Shakespeare. Now, this is an education, folks. Tolstoy. Here we go. This is what I want you to know. By the thinking that they are unable to do. Here, it's right here. By the thinking they are unable to do on the thousands of topics that locate the differences and disagreements of the most eminent minds that have contributed to the Western tradition of thought in the last 25 centuries. In doing so, they, have, they will have taken an important step toward becoming generally educated human beings. So, that's the rub right here. That's the rub.
Anything else? I don't think so. This is it, I think. Let's see. Oh, here's another one. Check this out. He's basically telling you the same thing as the other guy. You don't have to know everything. Here it is, right here. Right here. There are thousands. There are thousands upon thousands of ideas in that intelligible world. But only a relatively small number in that multitude occur again and again as discussables. As foci of human interest and dispute. As foci of human interest and dispute. So there's a lot of information. It's constantly multiplying. But in reality, only a small number of facts, of fundamentals, occur again and again. Only a small number of subsume all the rest, as we shall see presently. The small number that are the focal points of maximum human interest and importance in every era and epoch and in every generation are the great ideas. All the others that might be mentioned lead into them or are in one way or another subordinate to them. So, by the way, this took a lot of work, 400,000 man hours, and it took about five years to, to read and assemble all of this stuff. I mean, it's just crazy, the amount of effort that was put into it. So, that's why I'm having you look at this, and I'm saying, hey, check this out, because a lot of work was put into it, and I think it's well worth your time. I honestly do think that. So, there's that. Okay, I think I'm uh, done telling you about this a little bit. Let me know if you're interested in learning more about it. We can open, crack open some of these books sometime, and I can talk to you about specific sections. I love doing this. I could talk about this all day, but I do have to get going. So, thanks for watching. Check it out. The Great Ideas, Mortimer Adler. Investing, The Last Liberal Art, Robert Hagstrom, The Trivium, The Liberal Arts of Logic, Grammar, and Rhetoric, Miriam Joseph, Quadrivium, The Four Classical Liberal Arts, Number, Geometry, Music, and Cosmology, and then from the other video, Seeking Wisdom from Darwin to Munger by Peter Bevelin. Check it out. It's great stuff. The Personal MBA, The Master, Master of the Art of Business by Josh Kaufman. Great, great book. And, oh wait, this isn't part of it, but it's still a good book. So yeah, thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.